This video is sponsored by F3DM. If I were to describe the Two Trees SK1 3D printer in just three words, it would be solid, reliable, and underdeveloped. I was first made aware of the SK1 when Two Trees asked me if I'd like to try out their new model. I'll be honest, I initially thought it looked like the Kingroon KLP1 without the side panels. If you've seen my KLP1 review, you'll know that's not a good thing. However, after reading through the spec, it became clear that the SK-1 has some interesting features that, if they work, will make it stand out from the crowd of Core XY 3D printers that seem to be popping up every five minutes. I decided to give it a try and receive my unit about a month ago. I should say here that Two Trees sent me this unit, I didn't buy it. This is not a paid review, I don't do those, so everything I say is my opinion and nobody else has any influence over the content of my videos. If by the end of the video you decide you want to buy an SK-1, then check out the links in the description below, which should give you the best available price. Like most Core XY machines, the SK-1 is almost ready to go out of the box. You need to remove some securing parts that prevent damage while shipping, and with the SK-1 you also need to attach the screen, Wi-Fi antenna and the filament holder. Two trees have put their spool holder on the side of the machine and not the back like most do, which I find makes filament changes a bit easier. Instead of a manual, you get a quick start guide, which does give you all the information you need to get the SK-1 unpacked and ready to turn on, but doesn't give you any clues as to what to do from there. There's also a piece of card which tells you that your SK-1 has been through 47 different inspections before leaving the factory, which is good, but it is just a piece of card and there's no actual evidence that any of these checks have been done. It's all a case of whether you believe it or not. To be fair, I've had a read through and the only thing I can see on the list which might not have been checked that thoroughly is the belt tension. One of the belts was very loose in my opinion and I tightened it up early on. So how are you supposed to know how to insert filament, do any calibrations needed and start your first print? Well, it turns out there is quite a good video guide on the Two Trees website, not that you would know about it from any of the information that you receive with your printer. There is actually a lot of information on the Two Trees website, including a number of videos that will be useful if you're new to 3D printing. Unfortunately, most of these videos need downloading first before you can watch them, which is annoying. And personally, I just prefer that they uploaded them all to something like YouTube so you can watch them instantly. I like to set up these machines from the point of view of a beginner. And without these videos, I have to say that there isn't enough information supplied with the SK-1 for a beginner to get started. If you do find the videos though, it's actually pretty easy. The printer does need to run through a couple of calibration procedures, but other than setting a Z offset, none of them take any more from you than pressing a button. Setting a Z offset is also pretty easy, but it is very important that you get it right if you want your prints to stick. With a lot of 3D printers, it's possible to live adjust the Z offset while your printer's printing its first layer. You can technically do this with the SK-1, but only if you remotely connect to it and use a separate web browser. You can't do it on the printer's screen. I think this is a mistake and something that they should add in future. However, because of a very interesting feature that the SK-1 has that not a lot of other 3D printers do, once you set a Z offset, it's done. You won't need to do it again. That can't always be said, and it's very interesting to me, at least, how they do it. I'll go into more detail about that soon. When it comes to remotely connecting to your SK-1, all you have to do is plug in an ethernet cable or enter your Wi-Fi details, and then use the IP address that's shown on the screen and type it into a web browser on another machine on the same network. This is now all pretty standard stuff with clipper controlled 3D printers and Two Trees haven't tried to mess with too much. What Two Trees have decided to do a little differently though is to use their own user interface on the screen rather than using the standard clipper screen. This is always a little bit of a gamble as whilst it can simplify things for new users, more experienced users can miss some of the features that are not available like the live Z offset adjustment. Other than this one omission, I actually quite like the user interface. It's simple and what you need is readily available. There's none of the nice features like print image previews though, which some people will miss. When you start running through the initial setup processes, you'll probably notice that two trees have done something a little bit different with their bed leveling. It's important that a 3D printer's bed sits completely parallel to the plane that the nozzle runs through, and there are a couple of different ways of getting there. One of the most frustrating things when you get a new 3D printer is if you have to manually level your bed. Beds that need to be manually trammed to give it its correct name usually have four adjusters, one on each corner of a square bed. 
If you've ever sat at a four-legged wobbly table while sitting on a three-legged stool, you'll understand why three adjustment points are better than four. With three adjustment points, it's impossible to induce any kind of warp into the bed surface, which is definitely possible with four. Two trees obviously know this and have not only used three points of adjustment, but have also put a stepper motor on each one of these three points to automate the whole process. This is not a new feature and people have been building this system into homemade machines for quite a while now, but up until now, very few manufacturers have used it in production machines. The main reason is the added cost of the extra stepper motors, linear rails and lead screws. Two trees obviously felt that it was worth the investment though, and I have to say, I love this setup. I was initially a little skeptical as to whether it was necessary as by using a bed mesh, most 3D printers can compensate for a less than perfectly trammed bed. However, with a large number of prints now completed on the SK-1, I can confidently say that alongside the Bamboo Lab A1. I've never used a 3D printer that's produced such a consistent first layer time after time with no interference or adjustments. Running through the tramming and bed mesh process before every print does take a minute or so, but for a 100% reliable first layer, I'm happy to have a slight delay. The actual bed surface is a magnetic removable PEI sheet that has a rough and a smooth side, so you get the best of both worlds. What I also really like is the locating lugs on the back of the bed, which allow you to slide the print surface back into the correct place every time without fail. The heated bed temperature can only go up to 100 degrees C though, which I think could limit its potential in the long run. The SK-1 comprises of many machined aluminium components, which ensures that the Two Trees Core XY machine has a very solid frame. Along with some other great hardware choices, the solid frame means that some very high print speeds are possible. The SK-1 boasts printing speeds of up to 700 millimeters per second, which is ridiculous when you consider a couple of years ago, 100 millimeters per second was considered fast. Top speed is no good without acceleration though, and the SK-1 matches the best in this regard with a possible 20,000 millimeters per second squared. High speed also needs fast filament heating though, and the SK-1 can pump through 32 millimeters cubed per second, which again matches some of the front running machines like those from Bamboo Lab. The hot end tops out at 300 degrees though, so not every filament will be printable. Linear rails are also used for all printer movements, and if looked after, these will last the lifetime of the machine, unlike some of the carbon fibre counterparts on some other machines. Two Trees have also decided not to enclose the SK-1 model, although they have clearly planned to do it at some point, as all of the fixing points are there on the frame. It would be pretty easy to add your own side panels and a door if you wished, but I'm not quite sure how you would add a top cover with the way everything is positioned. The lack of side panels does make it very easy to see what's going on though, and the included internal light is also pretty good. Ordinarily, with these clipper machines, it's very easy to add a camera, and I usually opt for the pretty universally accepted Logitech C270. However, I couldn't get this camera to work with the SK-1. I tried contacting Two Trees After Sales support about this, but the responses were very slow and the offered solutions didn't work. Two Trees are about to offer their own camera to add to the SK-1 though, so hopefully things will be a bit better with their own model. Print quality is actually really respectable, and I found particularly good results with PETG. I've been working on a very interesting project lately, and the SK-1 came in very useful when it came to pumping out some high quality PETG parts. All of the PETG used in this video was supplied by our video sponsor, F3DM, who have just released their UZY PETG range. UZY filament is known for its extremely high standards in dimensional accuracy, colour consistency and ease of use, which is why it's used by many of the largest print farms, and their newly released PETG maintains those market leading standards. F3DM are able to maintain industrial standards of quality by manufacturing their own filament in Turkey, and not just buying generic filament from China like some others. UZY filament is not only available to industry though, you can buy any quantity you like through their website and they have a great range of colours to choose from. Next day shipping is available wherever you are and they're now using an innovative reel design that not only looks great, it uses a combination of materials that make it fully recyclable, which we like a lot. They also work really well with the Bamboo Labs AMS and AMS Lite for all of you wanting multi-material printing. Check out their full range from the links in the description below. Whilst the SK-1 is lightning fast and has all of the headline specs to back up high velocity printing, 
one area where it could be a little limited, especially with something like PLA, is on cooling. There's no auxiliary fan blowing air across from the side, and I was actually really surprised to see the job it can do without one. I have been testing in pretty low temperatures though, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs in the summer. Two trees have included room for expandability though, both physically and with extra pins on the control board, so don't be surprised to see some upgrades available in future. When it comes to slicers, there are two options available on the USB stick, Prusa Slicer and Cura. Both work fine, but personally I've been enjoying all of the options available with Orca Slicer, so I was keen to use it with the SK-1. Thankfully, an SK-1 profile has been included in the latest nightly build release, so I didn't have to do too much work. Thank you to all of those who did the work for us. The main reason I like to use Orca Slicer as much as possible is because of the embedded clipper interface that can be accessed from within the slicing software itself, and everything is handled in one place. The only thing missing is that camera feed, so I really hope that Two Trees have something available soon. When it comes to print volume, Two Trees have designed the SK-1 around a 256mm cubed build volume, which coincidentally matches the Bamboo Lab Core XY machines. The Bamboo Lab references don't end there though, and there are quite a few similarities in the hot end. One of the potential downsides with some of the more user-friendly 3D printers that are available now is that a lot of their hardware is becoming very model or at least manufacturer specific. Where it has always been very easy to buy aftermarket nozzles for 3D printers that vary very little, some manufacturers are making their nozzle and hot end assemblies in such a way that you can't just switch out the nozzle on its own. Instead, you often have to replace the whole hot end assembly if your nozzle wears out. This is generally easier for beginners than an old school nozzle swap, but it can get expensive, especially if you do a lot of printing. With the SK-1, Two Trees have kept some of that traditional thinking, but with a more modern twist. The hot end is very similar to that used on the Bamboo Lab machines, but they've designed it in a way which enables you to simply unscrew the nozzle and change it when it wears out, or even to replace it with something that offers different characteristics if you want. And that kind of design thinking is what you find throughout on the SK-1. This is not a finished product that can't be changed. It works fine as it is, don't get me wrong, but there's also a lot of potential to improve things down the line. The firmware is fully open source and you can play with it as much as you like. As I said, there are also some spare pins on the motherboard which you can use for things like additional fans. However, the core hardware is very solid and I can't really fault the way they've done things with the mechanical setup. There are some very powerful stepper motors controlling all of the movements and the frame is solid, which probably explains why the out of the box print quality is so good. At no point did I feel the need to mess with pressure advance or a PID tune, but they're there if you want to refine things further. So who is the SK-1 for and should you buy it? I can see the SK-1 being a great option for anybody with a little bit of experience who wants to take full advantage of the high-speed benefits of Clipper without being locked into a Bamboo Lab Creality or Flash Forge environment and proprietary parts. The SK-1 is a solid workhorse that just works reliably at lightning speeds. If you're looking for a candidate for a print farm or just a super fast printer for PLA and PETG, the SK-1 could be perfect. If you're a complete beginner, then there's no need to think that the SK-1 will be too advanced for you either. It works well out of the box, and it has the potential to grow with you as your knowledge increases. Is it perfect? No, definitely not, but all of its rough edges are relatively minor things that could be ironed out with new firmware or a minor parts upgrade at some point in the future. One issue I had that I didn't go into earlier was that the SK-1 initially struggled to meet its own very tight tolerances when trying to level its bed. Luckily, I have quite a lot of experience with Clipper now and I was able to find the setting for this tolerance and relax it a little bit to get everything working, but a complete beginner wouldn't know how to do that. After a few days, I reset this tolerance and everything has been fine since, but to this day, Two Tree still haven't offered me any kind of solution as to what I should have done, and I have asked. If you want to print with ASA, nylon, or any other materials that require higher temperatures, or if you just want to print pretty things with multiple colours, then there are probably better options out there. What the SK-1 is though, is a great 3D printer with a solid base and a lot of potential for the future even if its after-sale support is a little lacking at the moment. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you decide you want to buy an SK-1, as this is where you should find the best possible price. If you don't think the SK-1 is quite right, then check out one of these other machines that I think could be more suitable for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.